Hi guys, today we're going to look at a new asset, or relatively new to me at least. It's an asset called Rotors, R-O-T-O-R-Z. And uh, if you watched some of my previous tutorials, you know I have been using a asset called Tidy Tile Matter. Well, unfortunately... Oh, sorry about that. Just messing around a bit here. <laughs> you can't see that. Anyway, uh, Tidy Tile Mapper had a few issues and it wasn't updated, but what concerned me the most is I'm running a i7 4771K processor with 16 gigabyte RAM and SSD drives. And it was a uh, slowing my computer so for some reason i was uh, getting frame drops and well that's not satisfactory and i reported this maybe a year ago and actually the developer contacted me back and we talked about it but nothing happened i reported a few other errors and they weren't fixed either so i think the developer just gave up on the project well, that's fine. It's an old project, and it served its purpose, and we are now moving on. So, I found this one called Rotors, watched some videos, and contacted the developer, and he seemed to be a very nice guy. He even gave me a trial, and that trial eventually led to me buying the whole product, of course. So, I've been working on a game. It's called Victor, and uh, I've been using it extensively. <laughs> and uh, by using it, I found out even more and more small features that just make the, the asset really nice and rapid level building a thing that's easy. And I'm going to show you a level. Well, there's even a level difference in this game because when I started out using uh, Rotors, I started out uh, in this game. It's, it's my first game using this asset. So let's see, just let the level load up. And uh, I'm using a lot of assets in this game because I'm an idiot. I have no skills and I cannot do anything on my own, but I'm creative when it comes to drawing and designing things and I know how to balance. But luckily for me there's a lot of people who are very skilled at graphics and other stuff <laughs> I need and I'm using the assets. I'm using a camera. So these green things right here, those are camera borders. They are going to make sure the camera stays within the area, even though you move down, it's not going to show you one and a half level. And you can see the level is built up by three layers of something. And it's actually tiles. You can see if I click one of them, and then I get a huge let's right here. But that's actually just one chunk. You can see that's just one chunk of some, and I got. Some <laughs> pretty cool, pretty cool. Even animated stuff and coded stuff, all it does is basically take things you create as prefabs and then take those prefabs and let you draw. That's all I needed. <laughs> That's perfect. It's perfect for my needs. So, this is the first level. Looks kind of yeah. And then we're going to load the the level I made yesterday on a Twitch stream. I think it's well, well, yes, this one. I think it's this one. I'm not sure. Either way, you will notice a difference. You will notice <laughs> these yellow. What what do we call them in English? Spears. Balls, whatever. The light has changed. I'm still using torches. And yeah. 
yeah, that torch, if you know it, it's one that's free in the Acid Star, and it's just beautiful. This one is uh, my homemade. It's well, it's not as good as the torch, but <laughs> it gets the done job done. It gives me light and a bit of flames, as you can see. The texture work is uh, kind of shit, but imagine from out here you can't see it anyway, so yeah, that's fine. <laughs> well, I'm now going to show you how I actually draw with rotors and why this game is, uh, sorry, as it is, is easy. You can see I got this empty level right here. I'm just going to delete the main camera because I got my orange, but. That doesn't really matter. Rosas comes with uh, new menus, as many as you can see. That's just this one over here. It also has the brushes. By default, you get these three greens and these two gray. I'm not sure about the rest. And some of them are mine. So, I'm going to draw a platform system just, just to show you the basics. So, create a tile system is basically the same as create a platform. So let's call this main platform. One thing I noticed, it's very important to adjust these cell sizes because those are the sizes of these blocks. And uh, by default, it's 0.7. I don't know why, but it's annoying. It means they're going to overlap and it looks like shit. <laughs> but just leave it at that. Sideways, meaning we're going to look at it from the side, change upwards if you're going to draw something like, well, I don't know, Diablo style, top down view, you know. And direction is the direction the tiles is going to face. Well, that's it. Not going to do anything else. <clears throat> Create. Bam, there we go. Then we have these tools up here, as you recognize them, they are similar to a paint program. See, plot, paint, cycle, fill, picker, line, rectangle, spray. Basically, it's drawing tools. So we select our paintbrush, we select our, well, let's just call it color. And uh, you may have noticed I have selected this one by default it's up there so let's see yeah, let's see you can see this one has a surface and when i made this prefab it was upwards but i can fix that by clicking here you can see and just draw over it right click to delete so let's just make this sort of a little so i know it's neat the camera is pre-adjusted for 10 in height. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. That's our level area. I need to border my area with the camera. So I'm adding the camera borders. There we go. And maybe I'll add a bit more. Yeah, a bit of a, a jumpy thing. There we go. And then I want some points. Oh, wait a minute. We need to readjust. There we go. Readjust it. <laughs> these point things are scripted, and these are scripted. That's something I did previously. I even have a mark. But as you know, uh, mobs have a tendency to do stupid stuff. So I made a block called Drop. It's a invisible border only detected by the NPCs, meaning when they reach this area, they're going to turn around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, there has been a bit of a problem with uh, the mobs, as you can see, they are not doing what I want them to do. But hey, I can't even. Okay. You can see that's 
that's one of the minor issues. But hey, it's easy to just select them and delete them. There we go. Mobs? No. Let's uh, let's fix our level. I just have destroyed. There we go. And then I'm going to turn off the brush, and I'm just going to add my mob manually. Prefabs. Enemies, there we go. We got this thing right here. It needs to be on zero, and needs to be on the ground-ish. Let's add the player as well. Then we got our player. It needs to be on zero. Down here. That the work we need the UI, we need the camera and a initiates and the camera needs to find the player. There we go. And let's just see how that works. Okay, all these things I just dragged in are just the UI and the controls, but as you can see, it's colliding just fine, everything is working. You yeah, you need to jump on that. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. So that works. That's basically how rotors work. How fast was that? I I don't have a timer, but <clears throat> did it take ten minutes, eleven minutes? Five minutes, maybe. And everything is really just dependent on how well you have pre-set up your tiles. So what I want to do now is just something fun. So we're going to create a new tile. So we're going to create a cube. Well, in fact, it doesn't have to be a cube. We're just doing a cube because it's easy. And um, I have a folder called tiles right now. This cube. Need some materials, so we have some materials right here. We have some. Let's just do this black. So we have this black cube. Oh, and uh, this cube we are going to add a script to. There we go. So it's going to add this yellow gizmo thing. It doesn't really matter. It's just for display. So we can see what's going on, and we're going to make this um, sort of transparent so we get this view. And we're going to call this cube lane. Yeah, it's a lane cube. We're going to drop it in our prefabs. There we go. And we're just going to delete it from our scene. Now I'm going to turn it into a brush. So my brushes create. New brush, lame brush. I just hit enter and drag this one in there. If I had multiple sets of brushes, like I do for some of my tiles, I click this one and say, whenever this cube has some above it and on the side, use this cube instead. Well, in fact, let's uh, let's show you how that works. So let's just make sure when this cube is alone, except when there's one below, we're going to use a different cube. We'll use this cube. Okay, so you can see, always use this one, except when this one has one below. Oh, yeah. well, it's a bit confusing, but just close right here. You can see it's selectable right now. I'm going to my tools, I'm going to hit paint again, and I got this cube selected, so you can see we hit, oh, oh, but that's not what we selected, well, we have our direction wrong, because I have my cubes on the side as usual, so let's just set it default, aha, uh ah, -huh. uh -huh. oh, You can see, so you're actually able to place different uh, 
cubes or, or brushes or paints if you want at different uh, locations. If you take one of these, these are not even 3D models. These are just a um, material. <laughs> so take this material and you see, oh, there's one with flowers, flowers. There's different cubes you can uh, replace them. I don't think this one has different. Well, it looks a bit odd. It does this half these, half these. Different sizes as well. And this one, so you can have multiple layers of platforms. There we go. Just by painting. <laughs> I want these now. Bricks. And you can see it's drawing random bricks. Random bricks is because I have random bricks and I have. This is the weight. So mostly use this, second mostly this, third mostly, rarely this. So. Mm, let's just get rid of these. So we have four bricks, 75, and I don't know, 60, 50, 25 percent. Yeah, and if you're wondering about the textures I'm using, well, I'm using uh, I don't know what you call them, the SBSR. I made a tutorial once on how to use these because by default uh, you can't use them on standard objects, but stuff like uh, the Pro Builder objects you can. But where are they? GFX, there we go. SBSR files. Here we go. And here are my cubes, or oh, sorry, my bricks. And you can see I have four different bricks generated, and I'm using these textures right here. And you can see the one I'm using right here is this one, I believe. Yeah, it's the dark one, these two. I also have a light version, so in case I need those for later, I even think I already made them into brushes, so should be able to tell a difference. Yes, there you go. Easy to see light and dark, but basically the the that's just a fast explanation of what Rotas does. Let's uh, let's make it a level of this partial level a bit more interesting. So, so by default you could add a background. I'm just going to add another one called first background. And again I'm going to add one 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 as cell size. In the inspector I'm going to move the set axis of this entire thing to uh, I believe it's two yeah let's just do that. Then I'm going to select this tool, the rectangle tool, and my dark blocks. Rotate them directly, select them, right? There we go. We got a background. And I'm going to repeat that process one more time, call it second. Back again, cell size is 111. I'm going to the inspector, set this to 3. And this time I'm going to draw again. Just give it a few seconds to, to fill in the blocks. And then we have two layers of well, tiles in the back. Now, why would I want that? Well, if we draw over the game layer, you can see it's just dark. Well, that's because you don't have a directional light. Well, that's true. But the directional light only does so much to realism, so let's just uh, make it still a bit dark and the light intensity 2.1. So it's barely visible, but still. Um, 
the reason I'm adding that is because I could use that, take it in the options and call it gamma, and just let a player select some values between point one and point point nine or something, and give them the illusion they have a choice of value. Uh, but what I really want to do is click this. I'm going to select my second layer of tiles. You can see they lit up like that. And I'm going to select nothing, really. Just leaving it as is. And right-click and just delete a few. Oh, that's wrong. I'm just going to fill them in again. My first background. There we go. Delete a few. There we go. Then I'm going to select this one. This is also a thing I made. There we go. Adding some light. Also, there we go. Just digging up. That's why I added three layers. And see, this one is larger than it's actually two blocks in size. But if you place it, it's going to place inside, as you can see. So, yeah. Can also just make it a bit more moody by adding a bit. Random decor. And there we go. Let's see how that looks. Starting the game, it's a bit slow. There we go. Got my torch. Got my waste fire. This one has a really nice flickering, as you can see. This one also has, but it's Compared to this one, it's slow, so <clears throat> using them on the same screen is silly, but hey, it's just for demonstration. You need to land on the green part for them to die. There we go. <laughs> uh, game over. So, Rotas, well, I can definitely recommend it. It's easy, fun. And makes a uh, level production pretty fast if you have set up all your stuff uh, first. One of the first levels I have it. Unfortunately, I deleted it now because it was just taking up space in my project, and that's all. Always something you should be concerned about. I don't think I have it anymore. Oh, I had a level just with my. Uh, bricks set up, so I would add a brick or cube and assign it here and then add it to the brush. Next brick, add that to the brush, so I would have them all. But that's fine. That's fine. Hope you are happy with the video and uh, enjoyed looking into what Rotas is. Thanks for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.